Okay, so I'm going to try and do today is to go through the procedure of taking a series DC motor apart and uh, advancing the brush timing on it to make it suitable to run at higher voltages and powers. Now, this is a 13 inch uh, series wound forklift motor. It's rated at 10 kilowatts. And as a standard uh, uh, splined output shaft and unsealed um, bearing, which is very common uh, in these applications. So what I'm going to try to go through today is going to be the procedure to take this apart, uh, clean it, check it and advance the brush timing on it. Now before doing any of this, the first thing uh, that you should check is that the brush timing hasn't been uh, hasn't been advanced or changed um, previously generally in the forklift application because they tend to reverse the motor uh, the brushes are set to uh, to a kind of a, a center uh, plane so how you check it is you uh, see these uh, shoe pole field field coil bolts here and you go down to your um, brush box and you check that the brushes are in line with the pole bolts you'll see in this case that they are so that's the first check the second thing then that you should do is uh, discover which way that the motor should actually turn uh, for your car. Now the common uh, uh, direction is what they call, I think it's CCWDE, which is counter clockwise drive end. So what that means is that as you view the, uh, as you view the motor's shaft, uh, that it should turn counter counterclockwise so this way essentially when being viewed from its drive end okay some cars are different so you should always check that uh, first uh, before before getting started on any of the uh, any of the procedures Okay, so what we would generally do, uh, first of all, try and get the camera set up here so you can see into the brush box. You can see that we, in this particular uh, case we have a single brush for, for each armature pole. And the procedure here is that we need to get a pliers. Uh, we need to, uh, all four of these guys, we're going to take the brush spring uh, out and just have it parked against the back end of the brush hut, the brush, the brush um, plate here, and we're going to do that because when we pull out the the armature, uh, the brushes intend to be snapped forward when this comb pulls back back out of the way, and that would cause uh, possible damage. Uh, so we're going to try to avoid that. Okay, so uh, it turns out on this particular machine here, it's a little different uh, from the one that I have in the car, in that the brushes uh, don't seem to have a park, sorry, the brush springs uh, don't seem to have a park holder that I can just pull the spring up onto. So what I've done is, I've gone ahead, I've done the tree, and uh, this is the final one. I'm just going to pull up the spring, try and do it so you can see it here. Do it with my fingers, it's rather finicky. With the camera in the way, do my best. Try and pull that spring up, get my finger under it. There we go, I'm going to pull that spring back up out of the way. And I just pop the brush out like so, and let the spring just 
fit back down there uh, on the brush holder. So, as our first procedure, basically just gets the brushes out of contact with the cup. Okay, so the next part of the game plan is that we need to crack off all of these uh, drive-in cap bolts here. So I'm just using a small breaker bar and 13 socket just to uh, just to get them freed off. Now I'm no means expert on this. This is only the second one of these that I've ever taken apart, so probably not going to get it right the first time. This is also a slightly different machine because it's uh, it's a uh, I can't think of the company's name, Pi Oban or something such as that. They're uh, explosion proof uh, design, so I'm not sure how that's going to uh, influence uh, the proceedings here. So I'm just spinning out these uh, drive end cap bolts here now. There seems to be a second uh, kind of a skin in, in, in here, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to find uh, in here. So I'll go ahead and take these out and uh, get back. Okay, uh, so I got the caps, the cap bolts um, out, and then I went ahead and I made up a puller here. It's a couple of pieces of threaded bar. And I hooked that up to the chain hoist here, and I put a, a little bit of tension on here, and I just uh, I tapped up the um, edge here, and it seems as if this particular particular um, motor is slightly different uh, than what I had anticipated. It seems as if the drive end cap here uh, is a completely separate entity. Um, to the motor itself. As well, we can see we have a bearing here but the drive end uh, seems to be completely sealed. So that's interesting and it seems to have a welded seam uh, going around there. So this particular machine doesn't seem to come apart from this end so I'm going to uh, assume that it has to come apart from the com end, so that's a bit different to what I had expected. Um, so I'll see what uh, see what happens next. Okay, so this is the cap I just pulled off the motor there, as you can see. Uh, it's a pretty serious bearing on there. And it's a sealed one, so that's a good sign. And uh, having a separate drive end plate would be very handy. Cast iron affair, it's quite heavy. Um, you can see it's got an, a seal of some type in it here, probably from the forklift gearbox. Um, holes are threaded and tapped in it. Tapped and threaded, I should, or drilled and tapped even. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So, just thought I'd show it. Anyone that can figure out uh, the heritage of this particular machine. So, I'm going to go ahead now and uh, see about turning this baby over. And how we get a couple of blocks of timber. And uh, see if we're supposed to pull the armature out from the comment. So, that should be interesting to say the least.